Similar triangles. Similar triangles are triangles that have exactly the same shape, but are simply a different size as the two that you see here. You can also think of them as triangles that could nest inside each other and be exactly the same shape forever and forever and forever. There are three characteristics of similar triangles. The first one, corresponding pairs of angles are equal. So the angle of L and the angle at U are exactly the same angle, say 45 degrees. K and T will be exactly the same. And M and V will also be the same. They'll be exactly the same number, the same angle. The second rule is that the ratios of the corresponding sides are equal. What this means is that M compared to V will be the same number as L compared to U. So if M compared to V is one half, then L compared to U would be one half, as would K compared to T. The ratio or the fraction relationship will be exactly the same. The last rule is that the ratios of their areas is equal to the squares of their corresponding sides. So let's call this area x and this area y. So the ratios of their areas, so x compared to y, would equal the squares of the corresponding sides. The last thing I want to mention on this page is something that you may already know, but when you're dealing with shapes, the vertices are capital letters and the side lengths are small. The first rule of similar triangles is that the angles are going to be the same, which means that B and X are going to be exactly the same, which means X is going to be 75 degrees. A and W need to be the same, so they'll be both 40 degrees. And Y and C will be the same, so they're both 65 degrees corresponding angles are exactly the same when you have two similar triangles. The second rule of similar triangles is that the side lengths are proportional. So when you compare 4 to 5, it's going to end up being the same relationship as R to Y. R in this case is 6, compared to y, which will be the same fraction as q compared to 10. Now to find our unknown values, we'll just take one set of fractions at a time and solve for our unknown. So I'll take these two and solve for y. The quickest way to do it is to cross multiply. I'll show one extra step to begin with. So 4y is going to equal 5 times 6. 4y is going to equal 30. Divide both sides by 4, and you'll get y equals 7.5, or 7.5, depending if you want fractions or decimals. So for the second pair, I'm going to go back to my original. I could use my complete ratio in the middle there. I'm not sure if I did it completely correct, and if I made a mistake, I'm going to make two mistakes by using a mistaken value. So I'm going to go back and use 4 over 5, because that's my given ratio, and then solve for q over 10. I'm going to do quick cross multiplication this time. So it's 4 times 10 divided by 5 equals q which is 40 over 5, which is 8. 
So in this case, q equals 8, and y equals 7 and a half. All of these ratios, if I rewrite them, 4 over 5 need to equal. So y in this case is 7 and a half, and q is 8 over 10. If you divide each of those numbers, each and every time, you will get 0 0.8. So the ratios of the corresponding sides are all the same. And that is the second rule of similar triangles. Here's my second example dealing with side lengths. It's a bit trickier. Similar triangles can often be hard to see, but given that these two triangles are similar, that is the condition, you know that these two angles are the same. And then you have to figure out, does R relate to U or does it relate to T? And in this case, it relates to T, they are the same, and U relates to Q. So knowing that, 12 compares to 10, 15 compares to u, and 18 compares to t. I'm going to set that ratio up. So 12 compared to 10 equals 15 compared to u equals 18 compared to t. Notice I went from triangle 1 to triangle 2, and I was very consistent. So I went from the large triangle to the small each and every time. Be careful not to flip them, otherwise it won't work. You won't find the correct values. I'm going to take one set of fractions at a time, but I will reduce my original fraction to 6 over 5 to make easier work. So 6 over 5 equals 15 over u. Quick cross multiplication, 5 times 15 divided by 6 equals my unknown. And my unknown is 12.5. 75 divided by 6. 25 divided by 2. 12 and a half. Again, using 6 over 5 to find my second unknown equals 18 over t. This one is actually a little easier. You'll notice that 18 is 3 times 6, which means that t needs to be 3 times 5. So you can make really short work of this and say that 15 is going to be equal to t. Which means that the bigger triangle is 3 times the smaller. Now again, if you want to see what the proportion is, 12 over 10 equals 15 over 12.5 equals 18 over 15 the proportion each and every time is 1.2. And it makes sense that the number is bigger than 1 because I went from large compared to small. You can go the other way, and what will end up happening is you'll get 10 compared to 12. And so your ratio will be slightly different. So it doesn't matter which way you go, as long as you get the same number each and every time. So 10 divided by 12 is going to give you, each and every time, 0 0.83 repeat. The last characteristic of similar triangles is that when you compare the areas, it's the same ratio as the side lengths squared. 
So that would become 12 squared compared to 8 squared equals the two areas compared to each other. Be careful not to square the areas. So this will become cross multiplication again. So 54 times 12 squared all over 8 squared equals your unknown. And that becomes 121.5. If for some reason you don't have your calculator with you, I'll show you a slightly different technique. So 12 squared is 144 times 54. 8 squared is 64, and that equals your unknown. You can divide 64 by 2 and 54 by 2. And then you can take 32 and 144 and reduce that fraction. So if you divide each by 16, you'll get two and 144 divided by 16 is nine. So now if you follow through with that math, you'll also get 121.5. This is a really good mental arithmetic exercise, how to clear fractions easily. So that's the final rule. Now for just a small three skill testing questions. If A, B, C, and D, E, F are similar, the ratio, sorry, typo, of their corresponding sides is three to five, what is the ratio of their perimeters? And explain. Well, the perimeter is also gonna be three compared to five. And just a real quick example, two triangles, not drawn to scale, so three, six, nine. And if the ratio of the side lengths is three to five, it would be five, 10, and 15. If you add up the side lengths in the first triangle, you're gonna get 18. And in the second, you are going to get 30. So 18 compared to 30, when you reduce it, becomes 3 compared to 5. So the ratio of the perimeters is the same. Are all isosceles triangles similar? Are all equilateral triangles similar? Well, equilateral triangles, that's probably the easiest one to get to because all equilateral triangles have similar angles, right? They're all going to be 60 degrees. So this is a big yes. Isosceles triangles, slightly different story. Isosceles triangles have two side lengths that are the same. But now if I make this base really, really, really long, you should be able to see that those are not going to be similar triangles because this angle here and this angle here are completely different. So not all isosceles triangles are similar. Last one, PQR and LMN are similar. That's the condition, they are similar. Can they be congruent? Yes, so they're exactly the same thing. Let's see if I can draw them. I'll just draw them on top of each other, I guess. Okay, so if I draw P, Q, and R, and L, M, N right on top of each other, same angles, same side lengths, they have a one-to-one -one ratio. Thanks for listening.